Councillor Banbridge, how much impact does Silverstone Circuit have here? Um, Silverstone Circuit operates 364 days of the year. There's always something going on there. But it's only the major events that really have an impact on the surrounding area. Although the day-to-day -day working does mean that there are full-time jobs at the circuit. But it's the predominantly the British Grand Prix that has a significant impact on the surrounding area. The MotoGP used to when it was the, the, the Motorcycle Grand Prix but in modern recent years and since the Silverstone Bypass was built, um, it doesn't have the impact on the traffic, etc. Because a lot of people come on motorcycles. Whereas the British Grand Prix now, although the event is effectively the, 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 the Friday, Saturday and Sunday, it now sort of, the impact starts on a Wednesday evening and carries through until the Monday morning. And that's with people coming, camping, um, and it's also a mixture of people coming to watch the event, but also there are hundreds of people who come to support and take part in the event as well. On a public level, does the attraction of a huge event like the British Grand Prix or the MotoGP, as we've spoken about, bring with it problems for the people of Tilsta, e.g. noise pollution, traffic and travel problems? Um, yes and no. Um, the impact for the traffic is controlled because there's traffic measures that they put in place for the Grand Prix and those are quite deeply um, planned at quite a high level so you've got the police involved because there's all these safety aspects so there's certain road closures but um, those road closures are done basically at prime time so they don't seriously affect the residents except sort of early in the morning of the event but because it's only really one weekend a year most people just take that for granted and you don't go out if you're not involved in it on that day. Um, the big the bypass which was opened what some 10 years ago or so that was what had the, the, the biggest effect really on reducing the impact of the Grand Prix because historically, back in the, 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 in the 80s and early 90s, um, the traffic used to take you eight or nine hours to get out of the Grand Prix, so uh, it was a different kettle of fish. But in the recent years, the bypass has made a huge difference. Um, used to, Silverstone used to be the busiest helicopter port, airport in the whole world, I think, at one stage, with all the comings and goings, number of of flights in and out for those couple of hours in the morning and couple of hours in the evening but now there's hardly any helicopters. The other thing that's changed greatly is the camping. Um, traditionally a lot of people camped, they camp in everything from people's back gardens to farmers fields. Um, the circuit now uh, co cooperates with a landowner just to the south of the circuit and they have a huge campsite there and that retains an awful lot of the people so the impact to the surrounding area is a lot less than it was because we used to get hundreds if not thousands of people staying around who wanted to use the shops and pubs and unfortunately that's had a negative effect on the businesses. How much control does Silverstone Circuit have when issues arise over them and you, the council, over matters that concern? investment, expansion plans, or jobs being created or cut to the local community? Um, Silverstone has changed greatly in recent years because up until what, three years ago, the British Racing Drivers Club owned the whole area of the circuit and its surrounding land, which had a commercial master plan on it. So that land not only comprised of the race circuit itself and the buildings associated with it, it was the pit and paddocks and the the, the control rooms, etc., but also a lot of land around, um, some of that involved in motor racing, which was to be developed with uh, related industrial development, so things like race teams, engineering companies, all that. A um, couple of years ago, the BRDC did a very, very long lease to a company called MEPC, which is the pension fund of, I think it's British Telecom, they bought this huge lease, so they now control the land surrounding the circuit. And that's being developed um, 
aside from the, the, the race circuit. So you've got to split the two. So the BRDC, they run the races and they've got a small amount of land. And those races and things, we work closely with them with respect of traffic and noise measurements through a couple of committees that involve the county council, policemen, etc. Uh, particularly the events, because obviously there's, there's safety issues with the, not only the events, but British Grand Prix, for example, is the largest sporting event in, in Britain. It involves hundreds of thousands of people. So as you can imagine, security is at the highest level. And the, the amount of traffic means that traffic control, again, is at the highest level. Um, but the, 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 the motor GP to some extent, but the other events, yes, there are one or two that, that do involve a bit of traffic control, but not a lot really. What would happen to the local economy, specifically Silverstone branded areas, if the owners of Silverstone announced their intentions to leave immediately? What would the impact be on tourism, money that is fed directly into the local economy? It would have a serious effect without doubt. Um, at the moment, the number of full-time jobs at the circuit is not very high. I, I, I'm guessing, but I would guess it's, it's, it's probably no more than a few hundred, which is significant in itself, but it, it, it's not quite the thousands that you would get at a Grand Prix with everyone coming in. A lot of those are either coming from a distance or they're part-time jobs. So the impact of that um, on full-time jobs would be serious but not disastrous. But what it would mean is that there would be a lot of loss of, of income from the events, um, particularly local smaller businesses. I'll come back to the, the bigger picture. But we're talking locally, then obviously the, the pubs do extra business, bed and breakfast, a lot of... Private houses do bed and breakfast for the Grand Prix. Um, and the hotels, there's an increasing number of hotels around um, that I'd say rely on, on, on the Grand Prix. Although there's another side to it, and that's the, the posh hotels actually probably suffer from the Grand Prix because people now book up their big weddings years and years ahead. And because the British Grand Prix date is never known until about eight months before the event, um, there's this sort of... Uh, hedging your bets as to what's the best best way to book up in sort of June and July, but that's a bit of an aside. Um, I think the biggest loss, the loss of the British Grand Prix would be the, obviously the big one, and, and, and that would be a prestige uh, thing. I mean, we, we, Silverstone is our biggest event. Um, I live in Silverstone, I'm district councillor for Silverstone, and we jokingly say Silverstone is the best known village in the world. Uh, you name somewhere else that you can... I, lit, I, I was in the Brazilian jungle, this is true, about 20 odd years ago, and we went into this tiny village and it was um, a sort of a, a adventurous hotel, if you can call it that. It was a hut in the middle of the Amazon, surrounded by water. And I had to sign the register uh, for obvious reasons, and this... Brazilian guy with about one tooth in his mouth said, look down, Silverstone, ah, Ayrton Senna. <laughs> and you think, a thousand kilometres up the Amazon and the guy's heard of a village with about, you know, 800 houses in it, it's pretty remarkable. So, you know, it is it is important in that respect. Um, regarding the British Grand Prix... There's a more serious side to it because there's no other Grand circuit in Britain that could hold the event. Um, and if the British Grand Prix went from Silverstone, I think the UK would lose a major event. And that event is worth millions to the economy. Um, now, the actual income of the, from the, 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 the Grand Prix, I've yet to see figures as to how that actually percolates into the local economy. Obviously the circuit has to be maintained and a lot of money spent on, on keeping that up to, to a level. But the millions of pounds that spent in tickets and that, obviously a lot of it goes back under the agreement for holding the Grand Prix and some's retained. And I understand there's good news about to be announced I think this week 
where the British Racing Drivers Club or the Silverstone Circuits Limited are about to announce that there's going to be that they've made a profit, albeit a small one, from the Grand Prix, which they haven't done for years, which is good news because if it doesn't make a profit, it's obviously a threat. So, you know, it would be a disaster losing it, but I don't think it would necessarily cause a big dent in, in, in anything in the district, except for loss of pride. But going on from that, there are a lot of businesses in the area. At Silverstone, you've got Force India have got their um, factory there. They make the, the Grand Prix cars. At Brackley, just down the road, which is in our district, we've got Mercedes um, Patronus, which is the world championship team of uh, Lewis Hamilton. And uh, that has got a lot of people working there. You've got Red Bull at Milton Keynes, just down the road. At Northampton, you've got Cosworth, you've got Bricksworth, you've got the Mercedes uh, AMG engine factory. And one questions whether the loss of the Grand Prix here could have an impact on those companies being based in this area, in fact, in this country. Although there is inherent expertise around that does make it all worthwhile and, you know, why it's...